Today is July the 12th. Today, we have a message of comfort given to Judah. Reading through the Bible in a year, I'd like you to read Isaiah chapters 40 to 42. Now, the first part of Isaiah up through chapter 39 have been prophecies of punishment and uh, prophecies of, of destruction. But suddenly everything changes. In chapter 40, verse 1, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone. What a change. Uh, now, it's, it's so much of a change that there are a large number of scholars that believe that the book of Isaiah falls in two parts. The first part was written in uh, the 6th century, but the second part was actually written during and after the exile. Uh, they don't believe the second part was written by Isaiah. Now, the reason why they don't believe that is simply they reject the possibility of foretelling the future. Uh, if that's not a problem, and personally I don't believe it is, um, then Isaiah can speak a message to a future people. I think this goes back to Isaiah chapter 6. Do you remember in chapter 6 that uh, the Lord said, who will go, who will speak for us? Isaiah speaks up and says, uh, here am I, send me. Then, uh, the Lord gives him his message, and he says, speak to this people. Uh, make their ears dull so that they can't hear. Uh, make their tongues uh, so that they can't speak. Don't allow them to uh, uh, speak in such a way that they will not repent, and I save them. And Isaiah comes back and says, how long? How long? What a message, a message of destruction, a message, uh, a, a depressing message. But here's the issue. The Lord gives him an answer. He says, this message will go on until, and he lays out something that actually doesn't happen in Isaiah's lifetime. He talks about uh, uh, Judah being, being taken away as exile but returning and a remnant returning. When the remnant returns, then you can speak a message of comfort. Well, personally, I think what happens is that the Lord gives Isaiah the opportunity to speak that message of comfort to a future people. Enjoy today as you read Isaiah 40 to 42. Isaiah 40 through 42, New Living Translation, Isaiah 40. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Tell her that her sad days are gone and her sins are pardoned. Yes, the Lord has punished her twice over for all her sins. Listen, it's the voice of something shouting. Clear the way through the wilderness for the Lord. Make straight the highway through the wasteland for our God. Fill in the valleys and level the mountains and hills. Straighten the curves and smooth out the rough places. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all people will see it together. The Lord has spoken. A voice said, Shout! I ask, What should I shout? Shout that the people are like the grass. Their beauty fades as quickly as the flowers in a field. The grass withers and the flowers fade beneath the breath of the Lord. And so it is with people. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. O Zion, messenger of good news, shout from the mountaintops, shout it louder. O Jerusalem, shout, and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah, your God is coming. Yes, the sovereign Lord is coming in power. He will rule with a powerful arm. See, he brings his reward with him as he comes. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms. 
holding them close to his heart. He will gently lead the mother sheep with her young. Who else has held the oceans in his hands? Who has measured off the heavens with his fingers? Who else knows the weight of the earth? Or has weighed the mountains and hills on a scale? Who is able to advise the Spirit of the Lord? Who knows enough to give him advice or teach him? Has the Lord ever needed anyone's advice? Does he need instruction about what is good? Did someone teach him what is right or show him the path of justice? No, for all the nations of the world are but a drop in the bucket. They are nothing more than dust on the scales. He picks up the whole earth as though it were a grain of sand. All the wood in Lebanon's forest and all Lebanon's animals would not be enough to make a burnt offering worthy of our God. The nations of the world are worth nothing to him. In his eyes they count for less than nothing, mere emptiness and froth. To whom can you compare God? What image can you find to resemble him? Can he be compared to an idol formed in a mold, overlaid with gold and decorated with silver chains? Or if the people are too poor for that, they might at least choose wood that won't decay and a skilled craftsman to carve an image that won't fall down. Haven't you heard? Don't you understand? Are you deaf to the words of God? The words he gave before the world began, are you so ignorant? God sits above the circle of the earth. The people below seem like grasshoppers to him. He spreads out the heavens like a curtain and makes his tent from them. He judges the great people of the world and brings them all to nothing. They hardly get started, barely taking root, when he blows on them and they wither. The wind carries them off like chaff. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal? asks the Holy One. Look into the heavens. Who created the stars? He brings them out like an army, one after another, calling each by its name. Because of his great power and incomparable strength, not a single one is missing. O Jacob, how can you say the Lord does not see your troubles? O Israel, how can you say God ignores your rights? Have you never heard? Have you never understood? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of all the earth. He never grows weak or weary. No one can measure the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the weak and strength to the powerless. Even youths will become weak and tired, and young men will fail in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Isaiah 41 Listen in silence before me, you lands beyond the sea. Bring your strongest arguments. Come now and speak. The court is ready for your case. Who has stirred up this king from the east, rightly calling him to God's service? Who gives this man victory over many nations and permits him to trample the kings underfoot? With his sword, he reduces armies to dust. With his bow, he scatters them like chaff before the wind. He chases them away and goes on safely, though he is walking over unfamiliar ground. Who has done such mighty deeds, summoning each new generation from the beginning of time? It is I, the Lord, the first and the last. I alone am He. The lands beyond the sea watch in fear. Remote lands tremble and mobilize for war. Their idol-makers encourage one another, saying to each other, Be strong. The carver encourages the goldsmith, and the modeler helps at the anvil. Good, they say. It's coming along fine. Carefully they join the parts together, and then fasten the thing in place so it won't fall over. But as for you, Israel my servant, Jacob, my chosen one, descended from Abraham, my friend. I have called you back from the ends of the earth, saying, You are my servant, I have chosen you, and I will not throw you away. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. Do not be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. See, all your angry enemies lie there, confused and humiliated. Anyone who opposes you will die and come to nothing. You will look in vain for those who try to conquer you. Those who attack you will come to nothing, for I hold you by the right hand. I, the Lord your God. And I say to you, do not be afraid. I am here to help you. Though you are a lonely worm, O Jacob, don't be afraid. 
people of Israel, I will help you. I am the Lord, your Redeemer. I am the Holy One of Israel. You will be a new threshing instrument with my sharp teeth. I will tear your enemies apart like chaff on mountains. You will toss them into the air, and the wind will blow them all away. The whirlwind will scatter them. Then you will rejoice in the Lord. You will glory in the Holy One of Israel. When the poor and needy search for water and there is none, and their tongues are parched from thirst, then I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will never abandon them. I will open up rivers for them on the high plateaus. I will give them fountains of water in the valleys. I will fill the deserts with pools of water. Rivers fed by springs will flow across the parched ground. I will plant trees in the barren desert, cedar, acacia, myrtle, olive, cypress, fir, and pine. I am doing this so all who see my miracles understand what it means, that it is the Lord who has done this, the Holy One of Israel who created it. Present your case for your idols, says the Lord. Let them show what they can do, says the King of Israel. Let them try to tell us what happened long ago, so that we may consider the evidence. Or let them tell us what the future holds, so we can know what's going to happen. Yes, tell us what will occur in the days ahead. Then we will know you are gods. In fact, do anything, good or bad. Do something that will amaze and frighten us. But no, you are less than nothing and you can do nothing at all. Those who choose you pollute themselves. But I have stirred up a leader who will approach from the north. From the east he will carry on my name. I will give him victory over kings and princes. He will trample on them as a potter tramples on clay. Who told you from the beginning that this would happen? Who predicted this, making you admit that he was right? No one said a word. I was the first to tell Zion, Look, help is on the way. I will send Jerusalem a messenger with good news. Not one of your idols told you this. Not one gave any answer when I asked. See, they are all foolish, worthless things. All your idols are as empty as the wind. Isaiah 42 Look at my servant, whom I strengthen. He is my chosen one, who pleases me. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush the weakest reed or put out the flickering candle. He will bring justice to all who have been wronged. He will not falter or lose heart until justice prevails throughout the earth. Even distant lands beyond the sea will wait for his instruction. God, the Lord, created the heavens and searched them out. He created the earth and everything in it. He gives breath to everyone, life to everyone who walks the earth. And it is he who says, I, the Lord, have called you to demonstrate my righteousness. I will take you by the hand and guard you, and I will give you my people, Israel, as a symbol of my covenant with them. And you will be a light to guide the nations. You will open the eyes of the blind. You will free the captives from prison, releasing those who sit in dungeons. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to anyone else, nor share my praise with carved idols. Everything I prophesied has come true, and now I will prophesy again. I will tell you the future before it happens. Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing his praises from the ends of the earth. Sing, all you who sail the seas, all you who live in distant coastlands. Join in the chorus, you desert towns. Let the villages of Kedar rejoice. Let the people of Sila sing for joy. Shout praises from the mountaintops. Let the whole world glorify the Lord. Let it sing his praise. The Lord will march forth like a mighty hero. He will come out like a warrior full of fury. He will shout his battle cry and crush all his enemies. He will say, I have long been silent. Yes, I have restrained myself. But now, like a woman in labor, I will cry and groan and pant. I will level the mountains and hills and blight all their greenery. I will turn the rivers into dry land and dry up all the pools. I will lead blind Israel down a new path, guiding them along an unfamiliar way. I will brighten the darkness before them and smooth out the road ahead of them. Yes, I will indeed do these things. I will not forsake them. For those who trust in idols, who say, You are our gods, will be turned away in shame. Listen, 
You who are deaf, look, you blind. Who is as blind as my own people, my servant? Who is as blind as my chosen people, the servant of the Lord? You see and recognize what is right, but you refuse to act on it. You hear with your ears, but you don't really listen. Because he is righteous, the Lord has exalted his glorious law. But his own people have been robbed and plundered, enslaved, imprisoned, and trapped. They are fair game for anyone and have no one to protect them and no one to take them back home. Who will hear these lessons from the path and see the ruins that await you in the future? Who allowed Israel to be robbed and hurt? It was the Lord against whom we sinned. For the people would not walk in his path, nor would they obey his law. Therefore he poured out his fury on them and destroyed them in battle. They were enveloped in flames, but they still refused to understand. They were consumed by fire, but they did not learn their lesson. Scripture reading by Emily Herrera. Like, follow, and subscribe to this devotional on whatever platform you use to listen to it. Email your questions to us at questions at becomehope.com. Tomorrow, we'll see Israel's purpose.